Welcome to the Root Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. Good afternoon, everybody. I am your host. Look, I appreciate the Monday afternoon you've taken to tune into the show right here on the Two Line Stews Radio Network. You can tune in via Spreaker, Facebook Live. You can chat in the Spreaker room. And after the live show, you'll be able to find this as a podcast posted on the RootDogShow.com. And of course, that link will take you directly to SoundCloud. I'm about 194 shows in. Kind of interesting that 194 shows should fall on the cusp of a birthday weekend this weekend. And as much as I feel older, I really don't feel older. I feel wiser, more mature. Kind of like fine wine. Everybody likes wine, right? No, Nobody wants cheese with their wine. Depends on the wine you're talking about. But look, today we're talking about drinking things. No, this isn't a show about alcohol. You can forget about it. That dehydrates you. Forget about it. Or as they say, forget about it. That's the worst East Coast accent I could probably come up with. But look, there are a few places to listen. Make sure you check them out. And it's a great thing for everybody. Tune in right now. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rudolph Show on the Two Life Studios Radio Network. I think it sounds like an Academy Award spiel, maybe, or maybe even an inauguration speech. No, I'm not running for president. But regardless of that, thank you for tuning in today because performances can be next to the list, and nearest to that is what we know as the best that we can possibly do. It's flawless. That's the best we have, and that's what we have. Look, nothing is perfect. We can always strive to do our best because at times we all know Regardless of what sport you excel in, we can be creatures of habit and sometimes fall into the abyss of repetitive, albeit behaviors, mindsets, attitudes, how we approach things, how we look at things. And of course, is there a perfect way to do something? Well, no, there isn't. We can get close, but there is no surefire way to get to make things perfect. But trust me, there are those current and past sports athletes, they can probably attest to this, that at some point in their collegiate life, professional life, they have been taken something that didn't quite agree with them or the ban list in their respective league. NCAA, NFL, NHL, NBA, the list goes on and on and on. And there's lots of tribulations and stories they can probably offer to say the very same thing. And I think that when you believe that if there's a way of doing things, there's always a way of doing something different. Nobody has the right answer. Nobody has the great answer. They're always good. Everybody has a, a wrong way of doing things, a right way of doing things. But somebody's right way may not be somebody else's wrong way and vice versa. But it also gives way to a whole other segment, of course, something that nobody really wants to talk about. And that is the gray area. Look, there's one true thing you will find, and that is what you were made of, but it starts with things like eating right, exercising efficiently enough throughout your day, not to mention the determination to keep fluids inside of your body to keep yourself hydrated as you burn it out. So what you put in is what you put out. Enter my next guest who understands hydration. No, this is not your sparkless water guy, but he understands what you need to hydrate your body. Welcome, CEO, founder, does a lot of great things on the East Coast. Sorry about the East Coast swing there. Welcome, my guest of Up Tempo Sports, Cliff Rowley. Cliff, welcome to the Rude Dog Show. How are you? Thanks, thanks for having me. We're really excited to be here. Well, I appreciate you taking your time, and I know you're busy. Things are kicking off on the East Coast, just like they are all the way around, especially when you're talking about the NFL season. That will be happening September 10th. It is a kickoff weekend. I will be doing absolutely nothing, so I won't really need to hydrate on anything, but a lot of NFL players, okay, it varies upon opinion, whatever you like. You know, if it's wine, if it's beer, whatever it is, especially on a birthday weekend, you always want to wonder, what are you going to put in your body? You could probably ask the same question to these NFL players. What are they putting in their body? What is the status quo? We're going to dive into all that right here on the Rudolph Show on the Two Life Studios Radio Network. So thank you for taking your time out. Look, if anybody does not know Cliff Rowley, what you need to know is, is that he's a very seasoned executive officer. No, not of the law, but he's demonstrated a history of making what he does in the sports industry top priority. Skilled in the business development. He's done a lot of marketing, sponsorships. Uh, he's experienced with, with, with people and the experiences that he's had with people extend you know, 20, 30 years plus. 
So thank you for joining your uh, uh, joining me here this afternoon. And I know that we've been speaking offline about performances. We were talking right before the show and prior to that. We had a chance to share some of our own experiences about athletes that we've been in contact with. And there's always the, the, the conversation, does this guy show up to camp like this? And there's a lot of rumors around. I'll give you a good example. Ben Roethlisberger, who has showed up to various types of training camps for the Steelers, out of shape, not as good as you would expect, You know, not, not as lean as he once was when he entered the NFL, of course, in a backup position. Uh, and, of course, uh, T- Tommy Maddox injured, and that enters Ben Roethlisberger. But we look at these athletes, Cliff, and I look at them wanting to get to the highest level because right now the NFL, there is no higher level than the NFL. Being able to play in the NFL, be a part of an NFL roster, is just something that everybody should be thankful for and grateful for. But when we look at that gray area that I was talking about earlier and putting nutrition in front of that, we talk about athletes specifically, sometimes they acquire the wrong information and quickly become misguided about what their body truly, really needs. Cliff, what are some of the pitfalls some of these athletes can really get into, try as they might, as they fall into the wide and vast nutrition market? I think think the biggest thing for these type of guys, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, any high level athlete, it's always gonna come down to consistency. And the consistency of routine, the consistency of understanding what the best approach for what they need to accomplish is going to be. And I think when it comes to our formulation in the UA, we wanted to take all those things into account. So when it comes to what a football player needs versus a soccer player versus a basketball player, all of our research has gone into providing those healthy ingredients to make sure that we can answer the question that you just asked. Is there, yeah, no, absolutely. Is there enough research being put behind the creations of these things? I mean, we're not just talking about hydration. We're talking about supplements. We're talking about these power bars, as you like to call them, whatever they're called. I mean, are, is there enough investigative research going on behind the scenes prior to creation of these supplements to make sure that what they're giving is true to form? Well, when it comes to our product, yes. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to other products, I can't necessarily seem to. Uh, I, I hope that they're putting the, the, the proper research into their product, making sure that the ingredients are safe. Well, furthermore, and, and, and another area of concern for us is making sure that the ingredients are legal. Um, and they're legal within the construct of each individual lease. So when it comes to our ingredients, we try to stay as natural as possible. We're not 100% natural, but we are definitely using ingredients that are more uh, natural based, understanding that when you're dealing with these athletes, this, this language, these concepts are always ever changing, and we want to make sure that we're not going to show up on any kind of anything like that. Well, and, and that, that raises another question, something that we're going to discuss later on the show, but since you're, you're bringing it up now, talking about the NFL, and they have this very steep, dynamic list of things that you should put in your body. NFL athletes have been, you know, there's been so many, because of the days of social media, those things come out first. The ideas about, well, you shouldn't put this in your body, you shouldn't put that in your body, and that's exactly what the NFL is throwing out there. This, you can't take, that you can't take, and I and I know that over-the-counter things that a lot of these athletes get, and they want to claim the ignorance factor, saying, well, I didn't know what was being put in my body. Well, is, is all the information truly being listed on this data sheet, which is compressed into a label of a product that we pick up over-the-counter in a store? I, I think what's what, what happening is, you know, the FDA is definitely from a compliance standpoint, making sure that Every product that is out on the market has an additional label. Obviously, that's something that we all get to see as consumers and something that we all understand of the levels of ingredients, the type of ingredients, the percentage of daily value, et cetera. But when it comes to you know some of these other these other labels or, or again, basically forms of testing the product, 
you know, as far as has been compliant or as far as has been approved or performed other situations. So what happens is some of these products if you don't go through certain regulations or, or regulations or testing, but they still end up on the shelf for now. Well, what that tells me is that the FDA is, is somehow finding ways to not be as thorough. I mean, I'm not saying that it's intentional, but I mean, things do slip to the cracks because we're not perfect and we're human. We make those errors, but we're talking about any given product. I don't care what it is that is informing people that this is what you're getting. You know, your riboflavin and, and your niacin and your calcium and your iron, all these other various things. I mean, how accurate is the information now than it was, say, only five years ago? Well, I'll give you an example. In the military, actually, HBO did a show on this. And in the military, there's certain weight requirements. And when you're dealing with these weight requirements, more so from a female side of things, after giving birth to the children, it becomes harder for them to burn fat. So in some of these weight requirements, it becomes difficult for the women to get those numbers. So what do they do? They go out and buy fat burners. Now, some of these products that are being sold have actually, through this story, HBO, have, have killed some of our service men women. Because some of the ingredients that are in there are being shown that they're there, but they're not reacting well within that individual body. So even though they're being informed that this ingredient is in that product, it doesn't necessarily always mean that they're even so safe because they may not know how the ingredient interacts within their own body. Okay, so I'm going to take that to the next level. We're talking about heroes of our military and how the what their intake is, and as we're talking to the women explicitly, sometimes it has the adverse effect on them. But but again, let's go to the let's go to another level. The NFL. There are doctors in the NFL. You have your dietitians. You have uh, depending on how serious you are. We're talking about James Harrison of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A linebacker for them, and he spends three hundred fifty thousand dollars on nutrition. He spends it on a masseuse. He has, he has a couple of masseuses. He has a doctor. He has a nutritionist. He has all of these things. I mean, can anybody truly at the NFL level be father time outside of maybe a select few by knowing what they're doing by paying more closer attention to what they're putting in their body? Well, I think in the same time they. It, it, it's indicative of how long it lasted in the career. The longevity of, of what he's done and, and everything is very smart for him to continue to preserve his body and continue to put his, his body in such a rigorous season like the NFL. Um, I think when it comes to individual athletes and, and, and players and doctors and things, I think what happens is the NFL is and when it comes to these business situations, there's always going to be the ethical discussion of is it the health of the athlete or is it the or is it the uh, authority of the organization? Well, in this instance, it's really about how serious you are about what you put into your body. Again, what you put in is what you get out. James Harrison putting it in now, the sack leader for the Pittsburgh Steelers all time. So it's something that he's paid very close attention to over his time in the NFL, recognizing that the only way he's going to stay in it is to rise above the normal mental expectations of what it takes to put whatever you need back in your body based on what you exert while you're on the gridiron is proof that you can truly beat father time but only based on well obviously money you have to have that otherwise forget about the rest because that's one of the viable components but without spending a ton of money can say a female in the air force or a core woman in the marines are, are they not privy to the same information as these NFL athletes are to make sure they put back in their body where world-class athletes are putting it back in? I mean, is there type, some type of parallel that they can learn from the other? 
I, I think there, there definitely should be, no doubt about it, Rudy. Uh, I think that there, regardless of whether you're an NFL athlete or whether you're a service of the country, regardless of salary, time, or anything, you should always be given the proper information to be successful at your job. Right, and, and, and that leads to the very next question, is... Is the nutritional values that are being set forward, I know the FDA has a guideline and I've seen it, I've read about it, and I know you have to have certain, I'll put it this way, fast food restaurants have to have those calories posted on their menus in some fashion, whether it's on the wrapper, whether it's on the signage when you walk in. Are people really looking at this? I mean, or do they feel as though, hey, whatever, I'm just gonna eat it regardless, it'll get me full, and then whatever happens after that happens. I think some people are, I think everyone is different, obviously. Um, many people have different goals when it comes to calorie intake. Um, obviously, some people that are trying to lose weight are obviously going to watch the calories and make sure that they're not ingesting X amount of, uh, or more than their daily value. So for, for us, that's not really a concern as far as our calorie, our calorie base, because we're focused on that. So our brand isn't, isn't uh, you know, isn't consumer based. It's more business business based. Where we're getting right to the athletes, right to the coaches, right to the trainers, people that are using this directly on the sideline. Obviously, as we grow the brand, of course, we like to hydrate through more of a consumer reach. But right now, it's a focus on athletes, and they are burning athletes. Or no, sorry, they are burning calories very easily. Well, I mean, I can see if you're, regardless of what you're in, if you're burning the calories, should you not put in the same amount that you burn? I mean, is there, is there a happy medium? Along with not only eating certain types of foods and, 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 and greens, obviously, which contain a lot of iron, a lot of vitamins and benefits from those minerals and vitamins, but when we're talking about hydration as well, incorporating that into it, does, do those two mesh? I mean, do those two really work? together in conjunction to maximize what you're taking in, to maximize what you're putting out? I think when you're creating formulation, you want to look at all sides of the picture. You, you want to look at calories, you want to look at quality of ingredients, you want to look at the value of what the ingredients going to give. Uh, if you ate the case, we were able to maximize each one of those categories and making sure that not only are we using premium ingredients, we're using ingredients that are going to mesh well with the body, and also be able to give the highest performance possible and recovery uh, as well. So I think there is a happy medium. I feel obviously I'm biased because you know, you're regulating our product, but I, I do feel that we were able to touch on all those areas to make sure that this product is going to help the athletes in all phases. Uh, but on the calorie level, you know calories are energy. Uh, energy is what energy is for I look at the nutrition market. I'm not a not a nutritionist, and in all fairness, I I look very little. <laughs> Shame on me! Somebody somebody throw me a. Uh, I'm not going to be able to swim. Somebody throw me some type of uh, a flotation device out there. I happen to fall in. I don't know if I can swim my way out of the paper bag, but. Uh, <laughs> Shame on me, I know, I'll be 44, so yeah, maybe I should really pay attention to stuff. I think it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, to kind of give me a wake-up call. Maybe but seriously, I look at the type of nutritional system that we had back then. I mean, I grew up taking stuff like Shackley, and I really took that stuff seriously. And of course, you, anybody who's going to put vitamins in their body should obviously take that seriously, because it's a supplement, it's a deficiency. Those people that are lack of iron take iron supplements, you know, things of that nature. They, they bulk up on, on the cantaloupe, you know, or, or, or whatever contains more more iron in it. Uh, and sometimes those types of supplements will help offset so you don't become anemic, as an example. Is, I mean, are there real warnings? I mean, is, is, there, is there a sign that your body is not doing very well outside of being hospitalized from a nutritional standpoint that a student athlete should really be aware of and say, well, I don't want to end up like that. Well, I, I think that there's a lot of a lot of things that I would 
different in the signs that kind of show what you're in need of. Yeah, uh, your color uh, plays a, a, a factor in you know how hydrated you are, and, and you know where where you can be from a hydration standpoint. Obviously, the lighter, the, the, the more hydrated you are, uh, the darker it becomes. Something if your your body's not processing or if you're just simply not hydrated enough. I think the uh, University of Texas football program, their head coach is done a very good, you know, a very good thing and, and, and a very fun way. To Illustrating, uh, I think it's not hydrated, it's showing the levels of hydration. Um, as an example, it's showing, you know, if you're doing this thing, you're doing that thing, you're doing something along those lines, and that's kind of got to get out of the case. If you're not hydrated, it's going to be obviously showing the that, therefore, you're not going to be able to make that block for your running back, or you know, that tackle. Uh, or whatever it is, because you just have to be able to perform at a high level. So I think there are different ways that our body is still like. Um, and for us to be able to, so like we were talking about earlier, the resources that are around us, um, whether it's sports medicine, doctors, special conditioning, whoever it is, hopefully we have those outlets to say, hey, uh, these, are the, these are the things I'm going through, you know, what, what do I need, you know, and what, what doctors are helping well, hopefully so. Again, the information is out there to benefit you. If you choose to wear blinders and not look at it, well, shame on you. You're not really maximizing what you're what you're taking. And on top of that, you may be taking something that could be detrimental to you, potentially landing you. And I know that NCAA has their own rule set, NFL has their own rule set, as we stated here on the Rude Dog Show, right here on the Two Life Suits Radio Network. But we're talking about discipline. And when we look at discipline, when we look at label warnings, I mean, I, I believe nowadays you're probably more aware of what you could potentially damage your body with if you would just take the time to do your research, do your background on that particular product and say, you know what, am I trying to do a 4-3-40 or am I really leaning towards a 4-5, a 4-6? You know, there, there, are, there is so many warning signs Especially nowadays when everybody's more conscientious of the things that are around them due to social media and things of that nature. Of course, social media not being the root of it all, but it certainly helps the case to let people know, look, this is this could be bad for you. If you're an NFL athlete, you want to go buy something over the counter, this is not of a benefit to you. It will harm you, it will hurt you, and could potentially uh, disable you from maximizing your ultimate performance. Let over the counter look at there's certain ingredients in everyday practice of uh, uh, morning routine uh, for a lot of people across the country that could potentially be pre Um and people just aren't necessarily too to uh attuned to what their what their body's going through or, or you know sometimes some things uh are trying to go under the radar and start uh, to how your body's reacting so and and you keep on talking about it and there's a lot of good things about it, but you know, if I think it's as a, as a, as a concern for some people, do they have any, you know, elevated heart rate and things like that. So I think there's, um, if you're using on every day, over the counter type thing that, you know, everyone should be aware of when it comes to anything you're putting into your body, you got to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to make sure that it's going to be the best for you. Yeah, that's a great point. Hope the hopefully so. I haven't heard that word cope, but in a long time, but you're right. You're absolutely right. What, what, what's cope setting for you may not be for the next person. What you're taking may not be beneficial for the next person. And, and I believe that there could be a vitamin standard or nutritional standard for position players. For example, defensive backs may not be taking what quarterbacks are. Outside linebackers may not be taking what safeties are. And I think there, it could, there could eventually be something like that. Do you foresee that actually happening or is it just based on what you're aware of, what your body needs? Are you really in tune? with what you need to get you to that next level, to maximize your performance? Well, I think that, that, that's where I was going to get in the industry. I think there's a group that's going to 
You would talk about the 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 refueling and, and the revitalization of taking nutrients and, and minerals and vitamins and things of that nature. And I've had this conversation on the show before with a couple other individuals. So oh, I'm gonna pose this to you. Does an NFL athlete can they truly, truly, honestly say that they didn't know what they were taking? I think I think they can Obviously, they can say whatever they want to say. I think the reality of it is that uh, we, you know, there is a possibility. Um, some some things to be back. There's sometimes things to be back uh, to another ingredient, but then they're still showing up as a different ingredient. Uh, so there is a possibility. Um, I just think personally, my opinion is. Is regardless of the possibility, uh, you kind of have to be accountable to the court. Um, and I think that when you're at that level, you know what's at stake. When you're making those types of dollars and you're on the grand stage, um, you have so many resources at your fingertips. Um, hey, Doc, this, will this show up? What about this degree? Is this something that, that could uh, be a red flag? Uh, you know, whatever it is, that's what I think. Uh, well, I look in, in all fairness, but when I hear these guys and it, and they want to make it a point to talk to media, why? Because if they're out there in media, they can clearly see. Well, I didn't know. And as as interesting as it sounds to the people that don't truly understand what message they're trying to say is, is I didn't know that could hurt. I didn't know that could dash me. I didn't know that could put me on the naughty list, as, as it's saying. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think that these responses to, I didn't know, should be, well, it's your responsibility to know. You're in charge of your own body, aren't you? This is your business, what you do, right? You know, again, giving the excuses consistently that I didn't know. I think it's just a laughing stock uh, when it comes to certain players that have that type of layman ignorant excuse because in all fairness there isn't one bottom line there is not one but let's talk about let's talk about refueling now when i say refuel i don't mean your car but your body and you need to have i mean i know that i know it sounds funny but it's but it's true if you don't have gas in your car you're going nowhere 
If you're in an energy uh, saving vehicle and it's not plugged into full charge, you're going nowhere. And hybrid or what have you. But refueling the body is, is a possible solution in accordance with eating right, getting viable exercise, and, and everything all inclusive. But I think there's a proven type of recoveries after drinking UA. And and I, I based on what I've seen, what I've read, what I've looked at, what I've listened to, it's like somebody coming to the aid of athletes. If you're having a cramp, not to say it's gonna cure your cramp, but it's certainly going to help deviate to different parts of your body in order to come to the aid of what your body truly needs. Now, I'll be honest, I've used certain types of drinks, uh, which were initially, above all things, were thirst quenching, at least initially, but somehow the results were short-lived. I mean, I had phlegm, and I really couldn't taste, and maybe the aftertaste wasn't so good, and thought to myself, what is this? Why do you even sell this stuff? And so what makes you aid the best? And what does it do for sports athletes worldwide? So, when it comes to that, 
And you're talking about different, you, know, you have college, you have the NFL, you have the NHL. And when I look at various formulas and I think to myself, well, this particular brand been on a long time. I don't name names here on the Rudolph show, but uh, certain what we know as power drinks or to assist in the, the redevelopment of nutrients and vitamins, it, it's a very vague, oh, I think overly commercialized type of hydration process, meaning that the commercials are the same. They're trying to get the same message out there. They don't go into vast detail because you look at the, the other side of the label, it tells you how many calories, it tells you what vitamins are in it, what's not in it, obviously, and there are a lot of components and the ones you just uh, aforementioned in regards to looking inside of the body to help recreate those supplements that you need while you need them, drinking you, it will allow you to put that back into your body because it comes from your body. And I don't mean physically, I mean metaphysically. So when I look at the NCAA, because you say one type is sugar, not necessarily something that you want, even if it's your own, let's just say modified version of what sugar is, to, to put the term loosely, is are you developing different supplements that will go to NCAA that's allowed in the NCAA system? Those that are going to the NFL system that are allowed in the NFL system and, and to basically hit the NBA, NHL across the board to cover their dynamics to find out that whatever you're making will benefit them, will give them what they are needing after their season or their game is done? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, definitely does. I, I just think that when, when if you're really going to purchase these things, and I know we we're talking about student athletes and how those organizations, those collegiate buyers, as it were, just go out and get whatever. I mean, whatever the coach says, hey, look, this is this is what we need. This is what we need to get. We need to get this. We need to get that. And you know, make sure we have lots of ice and so forth. But I think what's really missed here in this in this demographic is 
let's try something different. Just because something looks like it works on the outside, well, are you drinking plenty of this or plenty of that? And they say, yeah, and they're still having these issues. Clearly, you want to make other suggestions. But let's look at what our intake is. As a head coach, an assistant coach, you're talking about playing multiple sports or, you know, I've, I've played flag football when I was a kid and I was part of a championship baseball team uh, growing up as well. So they just stuck us with one thing and one thing only. I mean, clearly, you're you know, 12, 13 years old. Your thought process is, well, I want to make sure what I put in my body is going to be beneficial. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. The reality of it is, is you're going to take what they're giving you and that's it. But when you're older, and you're, or you're more educated, you're either a chemist or you have some type of other background. As a student athlete, because now you're probably more prevalent, I'll be honest with you, the sports athletes nowadays are so much more dynamic, more explosive. Maybe that has something to do with the media outlets that we have today, but there's a lot of reasons why there is parity in one sport and not parity in another sport. Could UA provide more parity for those injured athletes to possibly put them back in the game sooner than later by sitting out? Correct. If they're doing the right thing on and off the field for the most part, a lot of the things are going to be Of course, they need to start to check, um, you know, getting a little off the hydration topic, but they need to start to check to prevent any yelling. Because my house, my house is actually worth a monthly five minutes along those lines. So um, I think that really the preventative uh, uh, way of um, looking at this, and UA has certainly. Um, prevented some of those types of things. So obviously, for instance, um, one of our goals in the football program is college and college and not college and college in therapy that basically said, look, we had a lot of with uh, hand and hair, uh, cold, uh, cramping, and things along those lines. So they were using a, a uh, solution product. And they said, look, we understand that you're in a contractual relationship. We know that that contractual relationship needs to be in place. But if, if that's something that you know, expires, they want us to know and then maybe we can talk. But so once the contract expires, we want to try our product. And I'm proud to say that they had seen a significant reduction in um, A significant reduction. And, uh, the things that they were seeing that were preventing them from performing on the field of play. So, you know, the country uh, provided a uh, high uh, to the athletes that have not seen these voices before. I think we're seeing a lot more of preventative measures. We're taking a lot of this money, a lot of this, a lot of this attention to protect brain injuries, of course, those are probably the most important aspects to any student athlete that knows exactly what it is. But when we look at the, real, the rehabilitation process, could UA be the answer for bringing them back to life sooner than later, put more money, more investment into things that actually do work instead of just giving you a little bit here, a little bit there, can we really focus on, and I'm, and I'm referring to all the collegiate colleges out there, Division One, Division Two, NAIA, I mean, you name it, they're out there, but you have a lot of partners that actually use UAID in order to come to the athletes, and I know it's not trying to sound like a slogan, but uh, that actually came out that way, but... <laughs> For those that aren't out there, those, for, for those that are out there that want to know a little bit more about this, go to www.u-ade.com to get more information. My theory is this. Less is not more. The more you have, the more knowledge you have, the more awareness you have, the more you can prove that something works because you have a lot of partners. And and, and if I may go over the, the, the slide, and I'm going to see it's not even a small list. Apart from Monmouth University, 
KUECAC, which is an Eastern College Athletic Conference, uh, Cosmopolitan, Clay County Soccer Club, Brockport, uh, WPU, uh, Garrett and Mix Football Clinic, uh, SI United, Sporting and Astoria Soccer Club. And the, the list goes out, outside pitch, for that matter, Old Bridge Soccer League, the Spartans, uh, uh, Fairly Dickinson, or excuse me, uh, Fairly, yeah, Fairly Dickinson Knights, uh, the Diamond City Titans. I mean, there's, this is a laundry list of organizations that have taken the next step to say, look, this is what we're going to try. If it works, we're going to continue using it. And I think that the larger collegiate universities are missing out on this. So why not try it? Why not be of a benefit to those student athletes? And if you're a coach and you're athletically set up right next to me, look, if you're a coach, you're not going to sit in a lawn chair with a cup of iced tea or a glass of tea with ice and an umbrella watching your players work. You're going to be out there showing that you're taking as much effort and desire and passion into helping them refine their craft as it is about you keeping yourself in shape. Why not take the next level and try something? Try something. Well, I, 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 I think it's definitely a next step something that we have both to the trainers and uh, and 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 uh, you know, it comes back to the, to the, you know, I think the humanity, uh, that's what happens is you can't, uh, attract people or, you know, things, uh, and they're doing things a certain way, but we always challenge that for some reason. Uh, and that's okay. Okay, well, is that worth it? You know, are the results there? There's a there's an old theory behind this, Cliff. <laughs> you probably humor me by it. But you are what you eat. You are what you drink. I think that's that that's the next level. And to name a, a couple other colleges and collegiates uh, entities that really believe in trying something different, thinking outside of the box and try you aid. NJIT Highlanders, uh, One Touch Soccer Coach, Alba Construction. Uh, those guys get hot. They deal with very thick and, and stiff situations out there when it comes to heat. North Michigan Wildcats is another organization. So you have a, a, a laundry list, and I think that there are other entities. Listen, colleges, Division One, Division Two, NFL. Look, try something different. Try something new. This could aid in your players' recovery efforts right after a very tough game, very physical, sack, hit, smackdown, smash mouth game. Why not try something that could be of more benefit? I'm always having you know, different players and different uh, different lines on the show, Cliff, but you have a, a showcase coming up in June. Tell, tell everybody more about that. Well, was something that we put together uh, as a, again, as a way to kind of solve, uh, I saw as a, as an issue within the showcase platform of tournaments and, and things along those lines. I think when it comes to showcase, there's many different ways to define a showcase. I think the, I think the problem is it comes to marketing uh, uh, and a lot of people are thinking, well, don't think that you're going to be in college coaches and my kids going to get recruited and they're going to get a full scholarship. And in the first world, that all works out that point, but in the reality of things, it doesn't always work out that way. So, but not only coming to most of these things, it's still going to be it's tricky here as a way that the athlete is performing within that showcase. You know what I mean by that? Well, if you have showcases that are three days, 
and you have the athlete playing two or three games per day, what is that athlete still taking care of? The athlete is gone. So I think there's a way that you have to preserve the athlete when you go big. Because it needs to be a win win experience for the coach and the athlete. So the UA showcase is something that we put together, which is presented by the PCA team, which is the largest NCAA conference in the country. So we're, we're able to now put on the showcase in a very uh, unique way, uh, in a very controlled way, of offering exposure for college coaches, exposure for student athletes, and then also having to be hydrated all of those athletes so that they're able to at the best level in front of those college coaches. So I think for us, it, it's a way to extend brands, it's a way to grow the brand, but it's also a way to provide value for the athletes, for the coaches, and make sure that everyone involved is going to be able to uh, succeed in what they're doing. And if the coaches, the coaches have to spend a bunch of money to travel and to talent and to be able to build their program, and from a uh, even after the standpoint of spending hard earned dollars in front of a club to be exposed to those college coaches and potentially play for a college or injury. And I think that their showcase is kind of like those two worlds and also providing them hydration with some of these cases. Some of these showcases in front of them do not provide any water on the planet. So above and beyond the performance issue, it becomes a wellness issue, and it can become very unsafe in some of these environments that are very hot and humid, and they're not providing something for the applicants. They want to put them in a second thing because they want people to buy you know, bottled water or whatever else they need to come in, so they're not necessarily providing them one time. You know, it's interesting that they, they should say that. And again, I'm not taking anything away from, from any other injury because an injury is an injury. But when you talk about CTE and the hydration aspect of it, I, I think attention needs to be paid evenly, equally, without discrimination across the board. Why? Because they're all equally as important. From head injuries to uh, post-game recovery and recovery times. And you know how many times I have actually even talk to athletes that have been injured in seasons. I'll give you good, a good case in point here. I'm not going to use his name, but I was talking to an athlete and, and, and I asked him, I said, well, what's, what's really going on? You know, is there a reason why you just did you know, a, a double knee surgery and things of that nature? He says, I don't know, it's just bad luck, I guess. I don't think luck has anything to do with it. I'm not a firm believer in luck anyway. I'm just going to put that out there right now, just in case my audience was wondering. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rudolph Show, the July Institute's Radio Network. I'm not a big fan of the word luck. Because what, what luck means, well, I was just lucky, you know, I made it in the end zone. No, not really. It wasn't luck. It was the will to win, the passion, the desire, the drive, the willingness to go above and beyond your normal and to be great when you needed to be great. And I think that that's the, the, the often component here is to say, well, it was just luck that I got here. No, it was very fortunate and well-timed that you were able to get back into the game when you needed to. And I think the aids to each individual student athlete in regards to, again, going back to nutrition, going back to hydration, uh, going back to playing concerns of uh, head impacts and, and ways to absorb that, I'm all for anything that's going to help enhance and provide player safety and rejuvenation because that's really what it's about. How can you contribute on the field when you're too busy on the sideline with a hamstring cramp? Are these other brands designated to help put back into your body when you're exerting out of the field? No, it's not. It's not. So people stop fooling themselves. Don't be fooled into the whole name game. Well, what's in a name? It's what's in the proof, not the name. Cliff Raleigh joins me here, owner, founder of UAID. Cliff, it's been fantastic. I love having you on the show. I wish all NFL teams could really try this product. NCAA could try this product. Every possible entity could try UAID. Go to u-aid.com, refill, replenish, revitalize, rejuvenate. That's a, that. That's the four R's for today. No, this isn't Sesame Street, but if there was called uh, 
if there was a root dog street, I'd probably end up naming it myself. But anyway, <laughs> Clint, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you coming on to the show. I wish you the best in your in your endeavors. And if there's any anything else that I can do, let me know. Bernie, thank you so much. I appreciate the time, and uh, thanks so much for the show. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Again, everybody needs to go to www dot u dash a d e dot com get some more information don't take my word for it go to ua dot com and get what you need this is Rudy Reyes on the Rudolph Show the Two Life Studios Radio Network I'll see everybody tomorrow thanks for tuning in you can find this will be a podcast on the Rudolph Show dot com throw me a follow on Twitter and check me a like on Facebook likes are good thanks guys appreciate it Cliff thank you we'll talk soon Thank you. Absolutely.